Unit 12, Land Availability and Growing Conditions. Wait, didn't we just do this? Well, actually we did. But in Unit 8, we introduced some of the issues with growing conditions, land availability for urban agriculture. And we also very briefly looked at some possible solutions. In this unit, we're going to delve a little deeper into some of the possible solutions, the way we can create or improve conditions for urban agriculture, um, given the issues of growing conditions and land availability. So here's a quick review. Some of the issues that we looked at in Unit 8 include the lack of land available for urban agriculture, land that is available but broken into small plots, or land that may be available but might be a brownfield, um, issues of adequate light, issues with poor soil or no soil, and lack of water or poor water quality. So lack of available land. Most urban areas today, especially areas where urban agriculture may have some of the biggest benefits, do have vacant land. However, this land may have buildings or pavement on it, or it may be a brownfield. And the land may also be broken into many small parcels rather than being large plots. But with sufficient ingenuity, along with some funds or other sources of help, most of these issues can be overcome. Let's take a look at land that's unsuitable for agriculture because it's paved. And we're looking for a site for urban agriculture. We find a nice plot of land. Um, however, it's been paved for a parking lot or it has a building foundation or something on it. Well, in many cases, it's easier just to leave the paving in place and utilize a form of production that doesn't depend on having open soil. Hydroponics or aquaponics, raised beds, greenhouse and hoop house growing, or vertical gardens. As we discussed, hydroponics and aquaponics in units five and six, we won't have to go back into the details of that, but just remember that such systems don't depend on soil and are therefore a good option when soil conditions don't permit in-ground growing. And they can be combined with a greenhouse or a hoop house to extend the growing season or even grow year round. Here on this slide, we see a hydroponics growing system combined with combination of hoop and shade houses. Such a system doesn't require soil and can be done over paved ground or brownfields that have not been remediated. In addition, it would be possible to wrap these houses in plastic supply a source of heat and grow year round. Here we see a paved bit of ground that has a very large and active urban agriculture operation on it. This was once a factory floor. The factory is knocked down, but the floor wasn't taken out. So the solution here was to install raised beds over the entire area. And as you can see, it's a la relatively large operation. Greenhouses or hoop houses, these can be built on ground that's unsuitable for direct growing. Again, paved ground, perfect. Brown fields can build over the top. Hoop houses are a form of greenhouse, generally utilizing hoop-shaped frames covered with plastic film. They're less expensive to build than greenhouses and in many cases cost less to heat as the plastic films can be doubled and therefore provide some insulation value. Um, another benefit is they're usually considered temporary structures and as such may not require building permits or be subject to regulation that a regular building would. And in hot weather, the plastic can be rolled up on the sides to provide ventilation. The plants grown in greenhouses or hoop houses can be grown in containers, set on the ground, uh, in containers on benches, can be grown in raised beds, or can be grown directly in benches. Uh, this is a photograph of a hoop house, and in this case, the plants are being grown directly in the ground, but they could easily be in containers instead. 
Here's another hoop house, a little fancier, a um, little more elaborate. And the plants here are being grown directly in these multi-level benches. Rather than individual containers, these benches are filled with soil and the plants are grown directly in that soil. This is a photograph of a very large greenhouse range. Greenhouses are more expensive per square foot to build than hoop houses and are generally considered permanent structures, so they require building permits and are subject to certain regulations that hoop houses may not be subject to. However, the uh, plastic covering doesn't have to be replaced every year or two um, since they're typically covered with glass or a higher quality polycarbonate type of plastic. Um, so there are trade-offs either way. Um, but any sort of growing that would be suitable for a hoop house could be done in a greenhouse as well. Small plots. The problems presented by small plots include getting enough production from a small area to make it worthwhile. Now in a community garden, that's generally not a pro problem as we don't have to make a profit. We're providing a service to the community. But all of the solutions that we've talked about so far in this unit, hydroponics, raised beds, aquaponics, greenhouses, and hoop houses are suitable for small plots. In particular, hoop houses and greenhouses can be excellent for smaller plots because the production can continue year round, increasing the yields and making the most of the land available, the most dollars per square foot because we can grow 12 months out of the year. Brownfields. In many cases, brownfields can be remediated, as we discussed in Unit 8. However, when for some reason remediation isn't practical, the cost of it, the length of time it would take, or the type of contamination, um, those remediation solutions might not work as well. So we may be able to use them as is using one of our previous solutions. Again, raised beds, hydroponics, aquaponics, greenhouses, hoop houses, that sort of thing. Brownfield sites can often be had very inexpensively compared to clean sites, and that money saved could be put into the building, the purchase and building of greenhouses or hoop houses or raised beds. And brownfield sites are often quite large as they were often huge storage or parking areas for equipment. Um, so they may be had for less money and allow a larger operation or a smaller operation with plans to grow because the cost of the property is so much lower. Inadequate light. This could be a problem for many urban gardens and farms, particularly those located on smaller plots where they can be shaded by surrounding buildings. Um, there are some things that can be done to allow agriculture on such sites. Um, first and most importantly, select crops that thrive in shade. If possible, paint the surrounding walls a light color to reflect the maximum amount of light. Of course, that's not always possible if you don't own the surrounding buildings um, and if the owners don't want that to happen. Um, or you can provide artificial light. We discussed artificial light sources for agriculture in the unit on indoor gardening, so we won't go over them all again here, but what we will mention is that artificial light sources can be used outdoors as well as indoors and could provide a solution for areas that don't receive adequate sunlight. Even weak indirect daylight, <coughs> however, is pretty strong compared to most artificial light. So the artificial lights would serve more as a supplement than as the entire light source for growing. This chart shows some crops that can be grown in lower light conditions. 
Some of these include spinach and kale and collard, mustard greens, lettuce, peas, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, beets, chives, arugula, Swiss chard, beans, endive. It's, there are a lot of potential crops that we can grow in less than optimum conditions. So don't let the fact that maybe we're not finding ideal locations stop us from creating an urban agriculture project. Poor soil. We mentioned previously we can utilize containers, raised beds, and hydroponics if our site doesn't have good soil. However, if we have poor soil that isn't contaminated, we can improve the soil to the point where agriculture is possible. Soil improvement usually means adding amendments to the soil to improve its structure, fertility, and water holding ability. Some of the most common amendments include compost, peat moss, perlite, sand, horse or cow manure, or chicken manure. This is a picture of peat moss, a close-up of it. And you can see that there are still visible fibers of the moss plant. It makes an excellent soil amendment and improves the structure of heavy clay soils. Heavy clay is probably the biggest, the largest type of soil issue we'll run into in urban agriculture. Um, when buildings are built, often all the topsoil is scraped off, put aside. The building's built and a small amount of topsoil is put back. Then when you go in to use it for agriculture, you find that you got three or four inches of soil um, over clay. But what can be done? Well, adding amendments to heavy clay soil um, is one thing that works. But in addition to that, using gypsum which is usually available in a granular or pelletized form, is an outstanding way to improve clay structure. Clay has a unique structure among soils because the molecules of clay form flat plates where one side is negatively charged and the other side is positively charged. And that's the reason that clay sticks together and also the reason it's slippery is the plates slide against each other but don't come apart. As gypsum dissolves, it releases charged ions, which bind to the charged plates of the clay, and the clay plates simply fall apart, and the change can be very, very dramatic. Once gypsum has been applied, and the clay plates start coming apart, organic matter in the form of peat moss or compost or manure can be incorporated into the soil to keep the soil friable from that point on. So, it's actually relatively easy, and, and gypsum is relatively inexpensive um, as a soil amendment or helper. And it also doesn't change the pH of the soil, and it um, doesn't have any adverse effects on what you can grow in the soil. Um, just another way to improve some urban growing conditions that may not have been ideal to start with. That completes the presentation for this unit.